we're here with my friend Philip Dow, the village butcher. And, well, it's quite a shop. How long has this been a butcher's, Philip? Well, I've certainly been a butcher's for 100 years, Neil. Um, I think it was built about 120 years ago, um, but I've certainly been a butcher's for 100 years. And how did it came, come to be built here? Well, I think they just decided um, there was farm and family in the village under the same name of Chapman's and they wanted to sell some of their, their produce, their cattle, yeah. and they built it on the side of the house, whether you'd be able to know. They literally built it on the side of the house. I don't suppose there was plan and then. And they built it so the sun was behind it all day. The sun didn't come in the windows. And uh, they started selling meat from here. Did they always have windows or were there shutters here, do you they think? They certainly had the windows and the windows came out. These were the window panes and they would be in there like that and they would take the first one out slide the next one, slide the next one, stand them there and then fill the winder up with meat and as you can see you've got your pork in there, your lamb and your chickens and they're putting a real show there, that could have been a show for Christmas because they've really gone to town and you've got your little chap here, he wouldn't have actually been doing any work I don't think <laughs> but they decked him out for it and uh, that is one of the Chapman family there who had it originally and uh, if you and that's see, his wife, would she work no, in the shop as well? No, that wasn't his wife. I think actually that was his mother. That was old Mrs Chapman. Oh, bless her. And uh, as you can see, the pork then had quite a bit of fat on it, Neil. God! You, <laughs> God, <laughs> you had that crisp? <laughs> you, you had fat with your meat rather than meat with God, your fat, I think. Blimey. So where did you learn your trade? Well, um, I started here as a Saturday boy in about 1978. Here? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and your job was putting fresh sawdust down, sweeping up the old and um, doing the jobs that nobody else wanted to do, washing up the mincer. And then Mr Chapman kindly said, when, if I wanted to leave school, I could have a full-time job. And um, I went from there. And um, in 1996, when he retired, I had the chance to buy it off him. And here we are in 2013, still doing the same thing, really. But then it was very, very much more hands-on. You melted your own fat down to make dripping, your pork cheeses. You manufactured everything on the premises, really. Would you go around on a bike or was there a van? There was a, there was a big thing then in rounds, so there was a lot of competition. People would go around, um, come with us and um, you know, come in our round, and once you got them, you had to look after them. And they'd go around, going back a while, I mean, pony and cart, and they had their own ponies and, well, they called them gigs, and that was a big job. They'd go out and they would take the orders and uh, come back, you had to brush the horse, feed the horse, clean the cart down, all the wicker baskets had to be washed, so there was a lot of work involved. And of course, as well, some butchers, not all, but this one and others, um, had their own slaughterhouse, so that was a lot of work, and they would do two markets a week. They would go to the Great Yarmouth Market, which taking meat on a horse and cart was, you know, in itself a big job, you'd got to trundle all the way there, and uh, come back and they say, put the horse to bed. And I heard a story once where, um, a lad was up there, they'd take a lad with them for the day and a lady wanted a certain cut of meat and they made, a come home, made him come home from Yarmouth to get the certain cut of meat on a horse and cart to get it up to keep the lady happy. Mr Chapman, was he one of the founders? Yeah. Was he the son of the founder? Or, or? He was. Uh, well, his his uh, grandfather, I think, was the first person to have it. That was old George Chapman. Uh, Mr Chapman, who I thought worked for, was George Chapman, but he was a grandson. And I also knew his father, uh, Ted Chapman, who was a lovely, a lovely guy. And he had it in the wartime, it was very hard. Rationing was about then. I think meat rationing went on well into the middle 50s. Um, so it was a very hard time for butchers then. And um, I think George, he might tell you, might have told you different, but I think he had it in the good times, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, when everybody basically shopped in the village. Well, there we are, Neil, that's the smokehouse. Uh, which has smoked hams, bacon, sausages, and various things through the years. Uh, That's a lovely little building. That you... was built properly for the job. How long ago, do you reckon? Uh, over a hundred, over a hundred years. Uh, probably local Martham bricks. They're the soft ones, which they would have probably. There was a couple of places in Martham that made bricks. Um, but, but they're uh, still holding well, though, aren't they? Oh All yeah, these years old. Absolutely. On. Well, they're definitely well preserved inside. Let's have a look. <laughs> there we are. Well, basically, you hang your bacon in, and then you, you get your sawdust, which is oak, chippings or sawdust, and you put a pile in the middle of the floor. And we used to use, I think it was wheat straw to light it. We just use a little bit of newspaper now, and then you light it, 
but you don't want it to go too fierce, so you dampen it down with a little bit of water around the edge, and it slowly smoulders away overnight, and the smoke gets in there and, and you know, preserves it. I mean, years ago when they didn't have refrigeration, they would try and keep things various ways, and smoking was one of them. Oh, that's just magic.